Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. It is a blessing for me to come to you today. And I trust that you're going to continue to be blessed with the testimony that, uh, that we are uh, discussing here of Dawn Warner. Uh, Dawn, welcome to the program. Uh, wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. Dawn is from the United States and she's one of uh, our internet uh, pastors. You know, we've got a, a internet church for people that feel they don't have a grace-based church in their area. And uh, so we've got people slotting in from all over the world onto, into our internet church. And like a normal church, we, would, uh, we provide counseling and prayer and uh, cell groups and all those kind of things. And Dawn is one of, one of our internet pastors. She's got a powerful testimony of how God has set her free from depression. How God has set her, set her free from uh, a life where she was... She, didn't leave her room for, or the house for about six years, the room for about four to five years. She didn't leave the room where she was um, hoarding, where she was so depressed that she was cutting herself and all of those things. And uh, today we sit with a, with a person here, with Dawn Warner, that is so flooded with the love of God, so flooded with the goodness of God. Um, Dawn, your life is a testimony, and I know that people are going to continue to be blessed by this. We're going we're gonna to pick it up where we left off, where you were um, in your room, depressed, and then you heard a guy called Joel Osteen, uh, the smiling preacher. Uh, you know, all over where I go, they call him the smiling preacher. And uh, he spoke about the goodness of God, and it changed your life. What did he say? Uh, he, it was just it was just one moment from God. He said, God loves you just as you are, and you don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to fix yourself up. You don't have to do anything mm -hmm. that he loves you just as you are, and that salvation is a free gift, mm -hmm. and you receive it. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, th that love of God touched your heart. You felt God spoke to you. Yes, I knew. I knew. I could feel the love of God. And I know mm. now that's the Holy Spirit. And mm. I knew that I knew God mm. had just spoken to me and told me that He loves me. Yeah. And you didn't even <laughs> believe God could speak to you, did you? No. <laughs> Uh, no, and my, you know, Catholic, I was semi-Catholic growing up, and um, we did not believe that God would speak to you. <laughs> what would you say to a person that says God speaks to him? Um, I thought Christianity was a bit of a cult thing, and I thought, you are losing it. You think God's speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> how can the Almighty speak to a yes, normal person? Yes, yes. I mean, how can he speak to you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got the process. You've got the whole thing. You know, he speaks to the priest. Yes. And, uh, Yes, and it's a hierarchy. You've got to be, you know, holier than holy to get spoken to yeah. from God, and then it gets passed mm -hmm. down to me, yeah. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and here you hear the God telling you that God loves you. Yes. You know. Yes, and, and I felt it. I felt the love of God. Mm. Glory to God. You know. So, and what did that love do to you? What did it? What did it do to your heart? Well, uh, before that, I thought. That there's no way that God would have anything to do to me, do with me. I thought I had to do and perform and clean myself up and do. I didn't quite know what it was, but I had to do, do, do to maybe He might have something to do with me. And that He met me in that hole. It was like hell. I say it was a pit, a pit that I was in of darkness, depression, and that He told me He loved me just as I was. It radically changed my life. I couldn't wait to hear uh, you know, what else he thought about me, mm. that he, what he wanted to mm. have with me. It changed my life. Yeah. It opened your heart to want to hear yes. from God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You, you mentioned something in the previous program. You said that when you heard that love of God, you felt accepted. Just, just talk a little bit about that. Yes. I know now that I felt accepted. I know now that I always thought uh, rejection was huge in my life. And yeah. I always thought I accidentally got here because of some things, you know, my parents had said that I really did slip by, that they mm. didn't plan me, that I was an accident and mm. I wasn't wanted. Mm. Uh, and so I felt uh, just put upon, mm. you know, I felt, okay, now you're here. We just have to tolerate your existence. And then now to know that God loved me and mm. uh, then to find out that he made me on purpose to love yeah. me yeah. and that he wants to live in me and make his home in me. It was mind blowingly good news. Yeah. Well, glory to God. And that changes your life. That, yes. that cleans you up and that brought a, a new life to you 
free from your effort, isn't it? Yes, yes, completely free. It was amazing. I, I would say I felt like almost high. I'm not saying every time that, that God would come and indwell me mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. I loved it. I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it. You're just so, this was nothing like I thought mm -hmm. my whole life, you know, that mm -hmm. I, would, I, I wouldn't think that God would have anything to do with me. Yeah. And now look, He wants to live in me. Now that is amazing. For those of you that have not watched um, you know, the first two programs, I want to just bring this to your attention. Dawn was in an accident about the age of 20 and she lost her leg and then um, uh, uh, got very depressed and felt that she wasn't beautiful enough, that she wasn't accepted. Um, and then she was in a room, uh, didn't go anywhere anymore. And uh, just, I mean, you became overweight, oh, isn't it? Yes. Yes, because if you're not doing um, anything, but you know, you're in a wheelchair and you're just sleeping all day and you're going from the refrigerator mm -hmm. to, you know, just to the bathroom, to the bed, I gained a lot of weight, um, a lot of weight. And it, um, in, in our household growing up, it was, you're, it's not good that you're overweight. You're worthless if you're mm -hmm. overweight. You're mm -hmm. thought of terribly if you're mm -hmm. overweight. And Jesus has shown me that I had lived in everyone mm -hmm. else's opinion my whole mm -hmm. life. And so now I thought, oh no, I thought that's what God thought. Mm. Though I knew he loved me, I still thought I had to fix the temple up for God. Mm. And uh, so I thought that God had given me this program of a bunch of do's and don'ts, eat this, not that. And so by now it's willpower. I know now it's willpower, all mm. dressed up under the guise of, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm. But inwardly, I have no freedom. Inwardly, I'm angry at God that uh, I said, you made me fat. This is your problem. How Now I have to do all these things. And I was so upset. And uh, But later on, I found out that it was a complete lie. Mm. It was a complete lie that the kingdom of God functions in completeness and from yeah. within, that it's yeah. already done. Yeah. yeah. So what happened to you is you you heard God say to you that I love you. Um, just the way you are. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to pick yourself up. That brought life to you. And after that, you started to get a little bit legalistic, w works orientated. So the foundation was love, but then you got into works. Yes, yes. Like I mentioned before, I was getting like fed by Christian television and there was a lot of things. You had to seek God early. Uh, you had to pray. There was things that you had to do, you know, study, spend time with God. And then it became a do, do, do. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't fun anymore and it wasn't easy and uh, so I can remember really the one thing that it was is that they were telling me that the Holy Spirit was now going to convict me every time I did something not good for God, not good mm. enough for God, mm. not right enough for God. not. Mm. And so, you know, I say your best moments before God are when you're completely honest and real with Him. Mm. So I had it out with Him one day where I like lost it on God, mm. flipped out on Him when I said, so you're telling me the Holy Spirit's going to tell me every time I'm doing something wrong. And so, mm. so He's a nag and He's going to nag me. So the Holy Spirit's my mother, like that critical mm. person in my life. And I said, there can't be. This can't be it. There has to be more. This is mm. the blood of Jesus Christ. There has yeah. to be more. So, of course, I repented and said, so sorry, Father, you know, for everything <laughs> I just said. And I said, show me what grace is. Show mm. me. Yeah. So you were just honest with God. You got yes. to a place where you felt that this, you started out in the love of God, and then you got uh, 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 legalistic. Yes. It's ru rules and regulations. You try to follow principles. Yes. Did these following of principles help you at all? No, no. It was bondage. It all the doing in the world, all it did was make me self-focus, more performance focus, and made me think, now God's disappointed because it can never mm. be good enough. It can yeah. never be right enough. And so I can remember on my best day, I could have maybe had a good day, and I go, oh, Father, but oh, just help me to do better, even better mm. tomorrow. Yeah. How sad is that? So that's also a... a, a you were always almost kind of moving back to where you came from. Yes. You know, because you were at a place where you didn't feel accepted. Yes. You're not good enough. You were in a house where, where, where your mom would see the B in the presence of six or seven A's yes. and focus on that B. And you had to become better and more right according to her system. Yes. Then you got into the love of God, you know, after 
a, a, a devastating life, got into the love of God, you were happy, and then as you started to go to church, yeah. you started to feel um, you, you don't qualify. Yeah, you now God to, has a system I have to work. Yeah, now the same system that was in your house is now Yeah, in, now God has one, yeah. and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, and that's when I had it out with him. It just seemed, but you want to please God. You know, you want to please him. You want God to think well of you. And if you don't know you'll that he already does mm. think well of you, the legalism started to creep all back mm. in, and it affects you. It just puts you under performance. I've got to do to be. But now for God. Yeah. So would you say that um, it would be possible for a person to become as depressed as what you were, um, before you became a Christian, yes, you know, after you're a Christian, if you under all these laws, yes, yes, because what will happen is though he says it that the law will kill you, the law mm. will kill you and bring about death in your life, mm. and it's all in the name of God, it's all in the name of a kind, loving Father, and so since our heart longs for that acceptance and relationship, now it's become I've got to perform good enough, and guess what? At the end of the day, that law is a constant moving. It's never mm. you can never obtain good enough. You mm. can't, and it'll always condemn condemn you make you feel lacking and it'll turn inward to a depression, to anxiety, to torment, to fear. You know, one of the things that I realize when you, when you say that is that uh, in Christianity we've, we've had this concept and that is that the law was there to bring a consciousness of our sins so that we can call upon Jesus. But now that we've called upon Jesus, now we think that God points us back to the law yes. so that we can now by the power of the Holy Spirit do this law and then by that actually have life. But what you're saying and what I've also experienced is that that cannot bring life. It just brings you back to the death you've been. Uh, the, the, the law is the, the power of sin. Yes. Uh, the, it's called the ministration of death. And it doesn't change into something new now that we became a Christian. It yeah. still remains the, you know, the, the, the power of sin and death. Now, uh, could you just share with me, you, you, uh, you through television, you heard of Joseph Prince. And, yes. and what happened there? Yes. Um, well, I started hearing that God was already pleased with me and that the, the work of Jesus was already done. And I heard about righteousness, that I couldn't perform for it, mm. that it was already, I've already been made right with God. And it was through hearing all about the beautifulness of Jesus mm. and what he thought about me. Mm. And then through um, online ministry, actually, on Facebook, I found someone shared a link with me to a church where actually I found this man named Berdy Britz in there. And he had a wonderful message. I didn't know it was you at the time of uh, just, I knew this was my father's heart for me. I mm. knew this was my father's heart for me. And the one thing that, you know, what they, what grace is, is that means it's his divine influence upon my heart. Mm. And God came to give me his quality of life, which mm. is the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, generosity, mercy, compassion. But there's not one thing I can ever do in my own mm. strength to produce it. Yeah. It is a freely produced in me by the grace mm. of God, persuading my heart mm. to believe what he believes mm. about me. Yeah, you know, when we look at the grace of God, when we look at the mercy of God, I've, I've realized that many times we want to narrow it down to, um, you know, grace is just God not looking at mm. our sin. But grace is much more. It's actually an influence upon the heart. Now, um, and we, you were talking about that influence. And I want all of the viewers to know this, that the influence upon the heart is the love of God. And unless you can come at a place where you say, I don't have to pick myself up. I don't have to clean myself up. He loves me just the way I am. Uh, you are not going to experience that influence. The influence unto a life where... Um, you can see what happened in Dawn's life. You remember, she sat in New Jersey, which is the eastern side of the United States, in a room uh, for five years, not leaving that room. And then now she's in the southern tip of Africa after hearing about the love of God. She's been, we'll talk about that, but she was, she's driving uh, uh, many places in the United States where she would go to conferences and things and uh, ministering to people on the web. And I mean, she even came cage diving, you know, at Hans by with the White Sharks. It is, 
it is amazing to see the power of this gospel. And I want to say to you, no antidepressant can do what was done in her life. I'm not against pills. Um, I'm not against medication. Uh, use it. But I want to say to you that even while you're using that, um, you can, without stopping to use it, just having your heart renewed by the love of God, you can actually be influenced unto a life of utter depression um, from that life unto a life where the life and the beauty of Jesus shines through you. Now, Dawn, I want to... Uh, um, I want to ask you, how did the message of uh, God as a loving father and the concept of family, you know, you know what that I preach on, how did that affect your life? Oh, that changed everything seeing, you know, you hear about God wanting to be your father, but yeah. I still based it on what it was like for my earthly father. But what he has done is he, they had the Trinity is that beautiful family, the mm. father, the son, and the Holy Spirit's our comforter. It's that mother aspect. Mm. And so they said, I have such a quality of life. So amazing. I want to share it with Dawn. I want to share it with you. I want to share it with all my sons and daughters. And so now everything you ever heard about God has to be filtered mm. through a healthy family family dynamic and that will filter out I'd say 99.9 .9 of the traditional mm. things that yeah. you hear about God. Yeah I think that is a, a healthy point of uh, you know just to read scripture from. Yes. You know I was thinking you know even before I preached this uh, Helena and I for years we, we, we just got married and this is what came to our mind. Helena would always say she would say well, it must make family sense. Mm. If we cannot put it inside a family uh, perspective, you know, it doesn't make sense. And what, what she meant by that and what became the cornerstone of our family when we look at scripture and doctrine is if we put God in the shoes of an earthly father and we have that earthly father do exactly what we ascribe to God, would he be seen as a good God or a bad God. Um, I'm thinking of the one one time when I was in um, in po a town called Potchefstroom in South Africa. They broke into my house and they stole all our stuff. And and uh, Elena and I came back from a holiday which we could not afford because I, I mean my my, uh, her, uh, my mother-in-law, her mother, took us on this holiday. We came back and they cleaned out our house. They stole like everything. And. Uh, I went to my pastor uh, at that time and I said, you know what, I'm not going to forgive these people. And uh, he said, you better forgive them. You're a deacon in this church. You know, you can't walk with unforgiveness. And then I said, uh, well, if God demands confession of sin and repentance, who am I to live a higher life than God? So unless this guy comes and confesses his sin, and shows remorse, I will not be able to help him. I will, if he's in a motor car accident, I will not help him because, I mean, he's got unconfessed sin. And that's the kind of thing that you're talking about. Yes. Um, you know, many times we think that God is a higher father than an earthly father. Therefore, we can ascribe actually some evil things to mm. him. Isn't it? Things yes. like... You know, for those of you that that uh, for, for those of you that didn't hear this, you know, Dawn said that they they actually somebody came to her and when she lost her leg in a motor car accident, said that it was God. And you know, Dawn, that is then things that is outside of yes. a loving father, isn't it? Yes, yes. And then finding out that he's this kind father that uh, came, Jesus even came and knelt with me and weeped with me mm. about this. And um, that my father, this is not from my father, my dad's a good daddy. Mm. And it, But it heals your heart. I always say the character, the integrity of our father's character heals us, mm. heals mm. our hearts. Mm. Yeah, amen. Uh, Dawn, tell me a little bit about just your involvement in our internet church and what's going on there or how do you experience ministering to people and all that? 
Well, it's amazing um, how God uses the internet and uses Facebook to connect us. And we have a wonderful platform uh, called Zoom, which is similar to Skype, and it's very user-friendly. So we're meeting up with face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, I have a ladies group, but some of the other web pastors just have a mixed group so that we can fellowship because in my area, uh, I didn't have any local Grace Fellowship. Uh, so we would fellowship online and we have a wonderful Facebook group called Dynamic Love Web Church where it's encouraging and we're lifting up and you can share prayer requests and we can just share our lives with one another. And what has happened is God's really connecting us in this message of grace because the most beautiful thing is, is to see Jesus through each and every one of us and what a gift that is. And it's encouraging people. It's making a difference in people's lives to know that they're not alone, that they're not alone, that there's others out there that are believing that our daddy is good and believing this message of grace that is the truth about Jesus. Amen. This grace thing is not just uh, one person that has lost his mind thinking God is good. It's something spreading all over the world, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's very difficult. I know it was for me when I was just in my room with the Trinity hearing grace messages and I knew no other person on, you know, in the United mm. States. So mm. it was so encouraging to be mm. able to speak with people mm. and just to share our hearts and what God's yeah. doing with us. And, you know, we offer counseling. Mm. We have everything, a local uh, building church would have. Mm. We have counseling and we have a Sunday live service that you do and we all mm. fellowship around it in a little chat. So we do have everything. We're not trying to take away from the local church mm -hmm. at all, but what we have found mm -hmm. is people are connecting. Mm -hmm. People are doing small groups in mm -hmm. their homes and they're spreading this word and inviting people in mm -hmm. and just hear the truth. Yeah, it, um, I want you to just tell our listeners if they want to connect with you, if they want to um, uh, uh, just talk to you. Maybe there's somebody that's going through the same time, same thing, depressed, feeling down. Uh, how can they connect with you? Well, you can connect with me on Facebook. It's Dawn M. Warner, and you can connect with me at dynamicministries.com or Bertie Brits. Dot com and we have a web fellowship and you just click on the tab mm -hmm. and it says uh, meet the pastors and I'm under there I'm one of them and also if you want to connect with me you can connect with me um, I have a YouTube channel that um, connect with and I have my email address uh, dawnwarner19 at gmail.com and I just want to encourage you that you are not alone Jesus was with me mm -hmm. I can see now that Jesus was mm -hmm. with me every moment giving me that hope that maybe tomorrow will be better mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow he was constantly working in my heart. And like I had said before, he came into that darkness with me. He's not a faraway God. He is a daddy that always wants to, when we can't even uh, call on Jesus, what he does is he comes to you and he lifts you up and he carries you back to the fold. And he gently and kindly loves you, loves you into his life. He loves those hurts out of us. And I want to say if you're depressed, there's a lot of shame that goes with it. And our father has never been disappointed you he doesn't think this is your fault and he knows it's not and it's his responsibility he will persuade your heart to believe the truth that will set you free and to heal you and bring his salvation in your life amen don't thank you so much for sharing that isn't that powerful it is just so powerful that god will share those things in our lives and he will bring forth that life i would just like to pray for you and just encourage you you know you are loved by god you are cared for by god if you um if you feel a negative word, no, it is not God speaking to you. God encourages, He lifts up, He sets free, and He gives life. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you that I can just pray for people that is watching all over South Africa and in Africa, to this, uh, watching this program. I thank you, Lord, that you touch them, you bless them, you, you give them hope, and you tell them that they are accepted supernaturally by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that, Father. Amen. I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you, Dawn, for being here. And God bless you.